Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8 and we go to Malachi. First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Anybody knows what it means to devour something? You need to come to my house around lunchtime. And you will see what it means to devour, Brother Danny. Because that little old sandwich on my plate looks about the size of a quarter and I just devour. And the scripture said, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, not your friend, your adversary, your enemy, the enemy of your soul, the devil. Come on, my Lord. He was so adamant and specific. Your enemy is the devil. Come on. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Turn with me to Malachi chapter number 3, verses 10 through 12. And I know when it pops up on the board, the first thing y'all are going to think is, oh boy, the preacher's preaching about tithes and offering. I'm not even going to mention it today. I want you to hear what the scripture said that God would do to the devourer. The devourer. That, that's the devil. We've established that he is the devourer. It said, bring me all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And listen to what the next verse said. It said, and I will rebuke the devourer. Oh. Oh my God. You mean my enemy who's walking around looking for something to devour. God said, if I would just be a blessing to the kingdom of God, and if I would just do my part that he will rebuke the devourer? He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And here's what shall become of you. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And I want to preach to you today on this subject topic. I'm in revival. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Cal, you can have a pity party if you want to. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you I'm not attending. I'm not RSVP in that one. That's one party I'm not coming to. It's going to be a pity party of one. Because I am in revival, Sister Kim. I'm tired. I'm wore out. I'm going to tell you something. I put in more hours this week than I put in in a long time. And I realize that I'm not 18 anymore. And if I didn't realize that, uh, this work has sure enough told me that you're not 18 anymore. I've picked up pews to my back pop. I've rolled out carpet to my knees crunched. I've missed nails to my fingers are blue. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm in revival. I said I'm in revival. Would you lift your voices in your hearts with me today? Father, we come to you today asking, Lord, that you would anoint our ears. God, that you would anoint our hearts. That you would anoint our minds to receive. God, we pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to go before us. God, that you would bless right now with the anointing power of your touch. God, would you move and minister in this house today. Let the anointing power of the Holy Ghost transform our thoughts and our lives today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And let everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. Please be seated. And when you get there, would you put your hands together unto the Lord. Amen. And tell Him how much you love Him. Amen. I love you, Jesus. You are everything to me. You are everything to me, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to be sober, to be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom 
He may devour. He is our adversary. He is our enemy. And we have established the fact that he is not our friend. Amen. I know I just sounded like George W. Bush. I sounded, I said the same thing 14 different ways. Amen. He had a speech that I was listening to some of his speeches. Uh, and he was talking about spreading uh, the, the love and the wealth across the world, uh, internationally, globally, as well as... Uh, he went on and said the same thing about five different times. But you know what? The scripture was being specific when it told us who the devil was, what the devil was, and what his goals were. But God was specific in what he told us. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Amen. And before I get started today, I want to tell you something. Brother Chris made a statement when he was preaching Wednesday night. And he made the statement about how I say a lot of times uh, that we don't need to go looking for a fight with the devil. Because if we do, we're going to find one. And so uh, let me establish and set a foundation right now. Tell this church again. You've heard me say it before. But I do want to say it again. If you go looking for a fight with the devil, you're going to find it. And you're going to lose. Somebody said, well, God's greater than That's right. God is. Uh, and he never calls you to fight the devil. Don't show me a place. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And Brother Chris, uh, he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He didn't say fight the devil. He didn't say do all this other stuff. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Uh, so I want to tell you today that we don't need to be devil worshipers, or devil stompers rather. We don't need to be devil searchers. Uh, we don't need to be those that go out looking for a fight because if we do, we're going to fight. It, uh, and we will end up losing because we are not powerful enough uh, to defeat him. That's why the scripture went on and said, uh, it said it like this, Brother Kyle, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, and so we know uh, that if God be for us, nothing can be against us, uh, but we cannot defeat the devil on our own. Uh, but through God, everything is possible and by God, uh, all things are defeated before the battle is even started. We must allow God to fight our battles for us. The scripture said in the New Testament, it said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. What is God trying to tell us to do? He said in Matthew, He said, uh, uh, He said to bless those who despitefully use you, Brother Kyle. He said to pray for those uh, who talk about you, and to pray for those who rag you down, Brother Kyle. Uh, and I want to tell you something, it works because He said we heat coals of fire upon their head. Uh, I want to tell you something, I've set a little bit of a foundation, and I'm going to set some up uh, in just a moment, but I do want to say this right now that I am in revival no matter the circumstances. No matter the circumstance that I may be in right now, I am in revival. And it doesn't matter if I'm living in a valley. It doesn't matter if I'm living on the mountaintop. What does matter is that I know that I'm in revival for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job was a man that was faithful. The Bible said that the, that the children of God, the angels of God, the sons of God, all the, all the men of God were come together. And guess who showed up for the meeting? You think just because we're having church service, the devil don't show up? He's here today. He's here today. And he's tried to dampen. He's tried to hinder. He's tried to tell everybody in here, you're too tired to worship. You're too tired to lift up your hands. You're too tired to sing along with the singers. You're too tired to clap. You're too tired to do anything. The devil has shown up in this church service today. And he doesn't like what's happening around here. But as the song said, I don't care what the devil don't like. I'm going to praise and worship my Jesus this day. Can I tell somebody today that I don't care what the devil does or does not like. I'm in revival and he can do nothing The devil showed up. And he said, oh Lord, I'm here. God said, what are you doing? He said, and this is exactly what he said. Maybe not in these words, but if he was in, if he was from Mississippi, this is exactly what he would have said. He would have borrowed Charlie Daniels and he would have said, I'm looking for a soul to steal. Come on. I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for somebody. And God threw Job under the bus. Or so we think. He said, well, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in all the earth? He's upright. He's honest. He's full of integrity. He's full of character. Have you considered my servant Job? And here's Job. What did I do, Lord? 
What did I do? do you, you just picked a fight for me. And God said, no, you just got to resist. And so you know the scripture. The Bible said that Job was at his house. And that a servant come and he said, all of your animals are gone. All of your livestock. Every bit of your assets. Everything that you own is gone. And before that servant could leave, there was another one to come back and said, I want to tell you something. All your fields, all your crops, they've been burned up. You don't own anything anymore. You're broke. You're busted. You have nothing. And the Bible says that before that servant could leave, that another servant come by and he said, all of your children, they're dead. The, the, the armies fell upon them. Everything is happening and you have lost everything. And the Bible said that in all of this, Job remained upright and retained his integrity. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Simply this, that it does not matter what the enemy does or brings against our life. We've got to make up in our mind that I'm in revival today and I'm not going to let my past or my future predicate the fact that I'm to turn back. Job never once found a place to give up. But what he did say was, uh, he said, you know what? I came in this earth uh, in nothing but this skin. Uh, and his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Uh, and he looked at her and he said, woman, let me tell you something. Uh, you speak as a foolish woman. Uh, you speak as somebody that doesn't know the scripture. Uh, you're speaking as somebody that's not in revival. Uh, but I'm in revival. Uh, he said, I came into this world with nothing but my skin. Uh, and if I don't have anything when I leave, uh, but this whole hide, uh, you better know no two things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm in a revival that the devil can't steal. I'm in a revival that the devil can't take away from me. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And then we hear of another man. Amen. Am I too loud out there? I feel like I'm too loud out there. Uh, turn them down. Turn me up. Because I'm not loud enough up here. My monitor's almost gone. Amen. And turn them off out there if they need to. Amen. I feel like you turned everything, man. I can't hear nothing. Amen. Jeremiah was another. I'm going to keep my thumb up until you get me high enough. Amen. Jeremiah was another man. He was another man in the Bible that was in revival. Amen. We're not doing nothing so far. I don't know what's going on. Amen. Jeremiah was a man in the Bible. It's not that it's coming through. It's just not loud. Amen. Jeremiah was a man in the Bible that he did everything possible, Brother Kyle, to have revival. And the Bible said, Amen. That's all of it. Amen. I'll fix it later. I've had it cooking my hair, so I'll fix it later. Amen. Jeremiah was another man in the Bible. He got so angry. Because everywhere he looked, Brother Chris, everywhere that he looked, he couldn't do anything. Come on. Everywhere that he looked, his body and his spirit was just so tired. Everywhere that he looked, nobody wanted to come to church with him. Nobody wanted to have revival with him. And so he sold up just like a bunch of us would have done. I know I would. I'm just being honest. Hey, but I know me. I know me, and I'm just going to tell you something. I, I'm not as good a Christian as sometimes I try to let on I am. Oh, that just shocked some people, didn't it? I know me. I'm flesh. I'm blood. And Brother Callis, I'm going to tell you something. I don't wake up every morning super spiritual. I wake up just like you do when the sun comes up and it's in my eyes. And I think, oh, my Lord, it's Monday again. I got a whole other week. I know that some of you wake up on Monday and say, oh, whoo, let my heels up. I can't wait to go out and look the devil. I can't wait to go out and face the world. And many of you may do that, but I'm just going to tell you something. I don't do that. I don't wake up like that. I wake up in the sun in my eyes. I say, my Lord, can't you hold off the sun for another 12 hours? I'm not super spiritual. And Jeremiah was just like that. Amen. I'm totally off now. Amen. Jeremiah was just like that. He didn't have any hope. He didn't have anything. Thank you so much. Amen. He didn't have anything. And so he said, he went to a cave and he sat down. And he said, you know what? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be just like everybody else. And I'm just going to sit here in this cave. And if they don't want to live for God, that's fine. They don't have to. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to have my pity party. And you know what happened? You're exactly right. Nobody showed up for the pity party. Nobody showed up. It was just Jeremiah. And all of a sudden, he realized, you know what? It doesn't matter what the world says or what the world does. What it does matter is, is that I'm in revival. And I've got to do what I've got to do. And he went on and quoted the scripture. He said, hey, I want to tell you something. The word of God was just like a fire inside of my soul. And I cannot let it go. I cannot let it get me down. I've got to have the Bible. It's one of the circumstances. 
to put the Word of God in our heart. That's why David said, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because he knew that if he would hide the Word of God inside of his heart and inside of his life, uh, that one day there would come a day when there would begin to be a fire uh, that would be built up inside of him. Uh, there would be a fire that would be built up, Brother Chris, uh, that would just be overwhelming and overexploding. Uh, power from the Holy Ghost. Uh, can I tell somebody today uh, that if we let the Word of God live in our life, uh, that there is no weapon formed against the church that will ever prosper? Why? Uh, because if God loved us uh, and if God Speaking of old David. Speaking of old David. Yeah. You're right. David was another one that decided I'm going to have revival. His daddy sent him out to the fields. Hey Amen. I'm struggling, Sam. Man, I know that y'all are doing the best you can. But I'm struggling. Hey Amen. Curl my hair if you have to. I want it to ring and then back it down just a little bit. David was another one. He went to face Goliath. But he didn't know that. He thought that he was taking bread. He thought he was taking cheese. Thank you. I'm, I'm good in there. I like that. I preach now. Amen. Holy Ghost just came back in the building. He went out for a minute and took a break. While well, y'all got that fixed, he's back now. Amen. Somebody said the Holy Ghost ain't contingent on the sound system. Try preaching on that. It's tough. My voice only goes so far. And the whole, the whole time David was going. He thought he was going for a family vacation. He thought he was going to see his siblings. And I want to tell you something that happened with Kyle when he got there. He found a bunch of jokers that were hid behind the stuff. He found heads that were popping up from every little thing they could hide behind. He found men that were supposed to be warriors. That were supposed to be true men of God. He found people that were supposed to love him in the spirit of righteousness, in the beauty of holiness. Amen. I'll see what the sound's coming from. Amen. Let me just turn it that way. That'll help me a lot, Thank you anyway. He got there, sister together, and he looked around. And he said, you know what? I was going to tell you something. I'm not in this utter denial that they're in. I'm not in this place that they're in. I'm not, I, I'm not scared to be where they're I just come from a revival. I just come from a field of sheep where God gave me strength to overcome not only the bear and the lion, but I killed them, I destroyed them by my hands, by the Spirit of the Lord. i have done what I needed to do to see that they were taken care of. And can I tell you today that David never once backed down from that fight. David never once found a place in his life to quit. But what he said, he said, I will go out and fight this uncircumcised Philistine. I will be the one that will do what everybody else is afraid to do. Because while you're all having a pity party, I'm having a revival. And the king said, David, let me tell you something. Number one, you're too little, you're too small, you're too young, you're too inexperienced. You see, that's the mentality of the world. Let me say it. Let me help somebody just from home. You're never too young to serve God. You're never too young to be a witness. You're never too young to be used in the kingdom. And you're never too small. You're never too insignificant. And you're never too unworthy for God's love to reach out. I'm here to tell us today that we need to find a place of revival and realize that if God is on our side, then it's on our Oh, somebody didn't get that. The devil is as a roaring lion. He said, I've been grabbed that lion by his beard. And I've destroyed him by the voice of God. I've destroyed him by the word of God. He said, I know how to whoop the devil. And the devil's the biggest giant that's ever been in my life. Let me tell you something. Just because your problems look bigger than anything that you've ever felt. You didn't remember what my old granddaddy said. When he said, the bigger they come, the harder they'll fall. David went out. You know the story. David went out and done what he had to do. 
He picked up five spoon stones. And I don't have time to go into all that. But I do just want to say, I do just want to add this, that Goliath had four brothers who were also giants. And in David's reign, all four of them were killed. All four of Goliath's brothers, there were five of those giants. And I'll, I'll tell you some of the time where they came from. I can show you in the Word of God where those giants came from. And they were generational curses is what they were. But the Bible said that he picked up five smooth stones. Uh, and people say some of the time well, maybe his faith wasn't as great as it thought it was. Uh, or he had just picked up one. Let me tell you something. He picked up all five of them because the Bible uh, is indicative. And history says that those four brothers uh, were also there. Goliath was the biggest. Uh, but I want to tell you what David said. He said, I may be one man alone, but I'm not afraid to fight all five of them if that's what it takes. I'm not afraid to get out of my comfort zone and whip all five of those devils because I'm in revival. Can I tell somebody today, by the power and authority of the Holy Ghost, that it doesn't matter what kind of weapon is formed against you, that as long as you've got the Holy Ghost in your life, there is a power that is greater than us and it is the power to perform works and miracles is the power to perform. I'm here to tell us in the name of Jesus, we need to see victory and we need to Amen. I tell you guys to turn me down just a little bit, but I'm scared too. And just a little bit. I'm having, I'm trying to be conscious of you guys. I know it's loud. It's just not loud here. It's louder. And then there's another Bible character. There's another Bible character. His name is Matthew. Joshua. You may have never read the book of Matthew Johnson. That's because I'm still writing. Yeah. Hello. Come on. Come on. And you're writing the book of Callus. And you're writing the other book of John. There's already four of them, but you're writing the fifth one. And you're writing the book of Devon, the book of Acts. And you're writing all these books, but I'm going to tell you what they are. They're a continuation of Acts. You look at all the scriptures in the Bible. You look at all the books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll find at the end of them the word of Amen. That means let it be so it's finished. But you look at the book of Acts and you can't find it. It don't matter what Bible you lose. You can't find it, amen, in the book of Acts. Why? Because Acts was not supposed to end. Acts was not supposed to stop. Acts is an ongoing. The book of Acts was the Acts of the Apostles. And the Apostles are you and I today. We are the modern day Apostles. We're the one that's carrying the gospel. So go ahead and let me tell you this story. Let me read to you just a few moments from the book of Matthew Jocelyn. I've seen depression. And I've been hungry a time or two. I've had to let bills go unpaid and thought that at times that I was going to lose everything that I had. But I've decided in my mind that I won't let this world get me down. I won't let pessimistic talk get me down. And I won't let folks that refuse to sell out for the kingdom of God get me down. Because they are miserable within themselves. But I want to tell you, I'm not even going to let people who are frustrated and looking for things to fuss about deter my resolve. Because I love God and I'm in revival. I won't let people who have me in the past influence me. Neither will I remain so close to the world that I'm enticed by it. I want to 
life circumstances keep me from getting back up. Come on. Not even one. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how great it is. I don't care how big it looks. I'm here to tell you that I will not. I will not let the devil destroy me. Come on. Come on. I refuse to stay down. I will not die in my setback. I will rise and make a comeback. Because I'm in revival. My God, that was so good. I think I can say it again. I will not die in my setback. Come on. I will arise and make a comeback. Have you ever had a setback? Yes, I was just wondering if you lied to me because I know you already have. You ever had a setback? At least you're being truthful. Anybody ever there ever had a setback? I've had some setbacks. I want to tell you something. I have fallen short of the glory of God four times and I carry a number. Four times and I carry a talk about that. Why I try to tell you that we need to sit boundaries outside of the word of God because I'm going to tell you 
something. Oh, dad, oh, dad's flesh and blood, and he will mess up. And if I live this close to the world, if I live around here in the world, I'm just telling you, I'm your pastor. If I live around here in the world, I will be lost. I will dog, die lost, and I will burn in hell because I will trip and fall flat on my face right into the midst of eternity. I know, man. That's why I don't have 